So a very warm welcome everyone to this year's first IE Talk session powered by GIBS Business School. First of all, on behalf of our entire team, faculties and student community, a very happy new year to everyone. And in today's talk, we will be exploring the world of franchising and how it works. Franchising is no more just a buzzword. It's a powerful force reshaping the entrepreneurial landscape. And join us as we unravel the intricacies of franchisability. Now, before we kick off this adventure, let's set the stage with a quick spotlight on the platform that's about to become our launch pad for insights and innovation. At GIBS IRA Talks, we envision a world where knowledge, inspiration, and innovation are boundless, accessible to all, and unceasingly transformative. Our vision is to be the pioneer that transcends educational boundaries, fostering a global community of lifelong learners, forward thinkers, and change makers. At GIBS, we are not your typical school. We believe in learning by doing that encourages new ideas, supports research, and sparks the spirit of entrepreneurship. Our goal is to help people like all of you reach full potential, both personally and professionally. GIBS Business School is more than a school. It's a place where innovation is encouraged, connections are made, and success is reimagined. Today, we are diving into the transformative world of franchising. From local gems to global powerhouses, franchising has become the go to strategy for scaling businesses. And we today will explore what makes a business franchisable the crucial considerations before taking that plunge and the essential do's and don'ts for successful expansion. Without further ado, it's my honor to introduce our esteemed speaker for today, Mr. Arunab Sinha, founder of Uclean, which is Asia's largest laundry and dry cleaning chain working on the franchise model. For a journey that started from a very small shop in Vasant Kunj area of Delhi, Uclean is rightfully credited with ushering in the laundry revolution in the entire Indian subcontinent. And all of this in just six years. An IIT Bombay graduate, Arunab carries a solid amount of experience in the franchising and startup space and is widely regarded as a scale-up specialist. A huge believer in micro-entrepreneurship, Arunab has leveraged the power of franchising to introduce Uclean across multiple neighborhoods of the country. Enabling access to finance, technology, trained manpower, and resources has helped Uclean partner with small but passionate entrepreneurs and get them started on their Uclean journey. Arunab has been recognized by Entrepreneur Magazine as 35 under 35 most promising entrepreneurs of India, and he also serves as the on the prestigious CII Retail Panel as well as on the Board of Technology. Business Incubator Foundation for the IITs. Ladies and gentlemen, future, future entrepreneurs and innovators, buckle up because the moment has arrived to ignite the spark of inspiration. And as we embark on this exciting journey through the landscape of franchising, get ready to amplify your knowledge, ask questions, and engage in this dialogue that goes beyond just business metrics to touch upon some really good strategies and human experiences. Without further ado, let me now hand over the session to Aruna. Thank you so much, Aruna, for joining us today. Thank you, Palak. The pleasure is all mine. And I must extend my gratitude to GIBS uh, Business School and IRE Talks for providing this fantastic platform to talk about franchising. And during the next one hour, I'll also leverage a lot of the learnings that I have gained in over the last uh, more than a decade that I've been in this franchising industry. Uh, in fact, I have a short presentation I'll also run through uh, during this uh, call. But what I would also recommend is that uh, if during the course of the presentation, if somebody has some question related to the presentation to a particular slide, please feel free to write them in the Q&A box and I'll try and take them as soon as I can. So let Definitely. me quickly share this presentation. I think uh, it's visible, right? Yes, yes, it is. Okay. So franchising is, uh, honestly speaking, something that I'm extremely passionate about, something that I've been doing for more than a decade now. 
But what I also realized is that a lot of people either don't understand franchising or have a vague understanding of franchising or do not understand what franchising actually entails. So in this presentation, I'll start off by talking about what franchising is and what I have learned over the last decade or so. And uh, also important to understand that not every business is franchisable. So there are a lot of startups, a lot of businesses out there and a lot of them that should not be in franchising in the first place, but they're doing it because they figure they, they believe that it's an easier way to make money or easier way to expand. But honestly, before you embark on the journey of franchising, it is very important to understand one, is your business cut out for franchising? And two, if it is cut out for franchising, what all you need before you jump into the fray. And finally, very importantly, I will also like to talk about who or which brand should not franchise. So very quickly, uh, like Palak mentioned, I am Arunab Sinha. I am the founder and CEO of Uclean, uh, which is today Asia's largest laundry and dry cleaning company working on the franchise model. And what we do is we partner with micro entrepreneurs. So personally, I'm a very strong believer in the power of micro entrepreneurship. India has historically been a country of shopkeepers. This is a British legacy. So if you look at the statistics, UK used to have the highest number of shops per square kilometer. Today, India leads that race. And this is a legacy that the Britishers passed on to us. They created micro entrepreneurship or rather created the urge within Indians to become micro entrepreneurs. Look at any family in India. You would realize that secretly any and every family in India harbors the dream of owning a business. This could be a side business. This could be a very small business. But as a country, we are very entrepreneurial in nature. And every family wants to own some sort of a business or the other. For some, this could be their main income source. For some, this could be a side business. But almost every family in India wants to own some business or the other. And that is what Uclean has capitalized on. That urge to become a franchise owner, that urge to become a business owner, that urge to become a launderer or dry cleaner is what has fueled the growth of Uclean. So today Uclean has a network which is present in about 140 cities of India. Uh, we have close to 450 franchise partners and we are present in some of the very small towns and villages in Northeast India, East India and West India where a few years back people would have not thought that a business like Uclean would work. But it is working, it is working very well, successfully and profitably. And all the credit for that goes to these micro entrepreneurs of India who are working as our franchise partners. Uh, Uclean is my second startup. I started my first company in 2010 by the name of Frank Global, uh, which was predominantly a cross-border consultancy and brokerage company where we used to help international brands enter India and Indian brands expand internationally. Uh, I ran that company for five years, but before it was completely acquired by Franchise India Group and Times of India. Uh, after selling off that business for one and a half years, I was heading the North India business for Bangalore-based Tribo Hotels, which is today the second largest budget hotel chain in India after Oyo Rooms. And again, a model that was working on franchising. So franchising literally flows in my DNA. Franchising is something that I'm super passionate about. And over the next 40, 45 minutes, I would try to share as much of my learnings about the franchising industry as I can. Now, while we talk about franchising, I also understand that franchising is still not a very familiar term. And especially when you talk about India, franchising is relatively still very new. We are less than three decades as a country when we come to franchising. And when you talk about serious franchising, we are not even two decades old. Now, when you contrast this with the US, which is literally the mother of franchising for the world, it is almost a century old. And when you look at Europe, you look at Southeast Asia, I can say with a fair degree of confidence that franchising has been prevalent for at least 40 to 50 years. So in that sense, India is still taking baby steps, but the last one decade in particular has seen a fantastic growth in micro entrepreneurship and a fantastic growth in franchising. So what is franchising? Say there's a brand, a brand like you 
team that wants to establish its presence, it, its footprints across multiple locations within a country or even outside. So franchising allows you to exactly do that without making it capital intensive. If as Uclean, I wanted to set up company owned, company operated outlets everywhere in India, it would be one that it would be a very capital intensive operation. I would have to budget for 20, 25 lakhs every time I open a new location. I'll need to make sure that I hire for those locations. These people come on my, on my payrolls, which would also make it operationally very intensive. So what franchising does is one, it allows you to expand your brand to multiple locations simultaneously without being very capital intensive or operationally intensive. The company that is franchising is known as the franchisor or the brand and somebody, a micro entrepreneur who actually buys your franchisee and invests in starting your franchisees and in a new location is called a franchisee. So the relationship is between a franchisor and a franchisee. It is governed by what you call a definitive franchise agreement, but there are a lot of other pictures to the puzzle that need to be solved before you can create a successful franchising backbone. Now, this is the stakeholder mapping. So franchising business, because it involves multiple parties, is a little complicated and is a little difficult to understand. So when you look at franchising as a business, there are two primary stakeholders. One is your franchisor or the brand. And the second is your franchisee or somebody who has taken the franchisee of your brand. These two are your primary stakeholders when you talk about a franchising business. Now, there are a lot of secondary stakeholders that you will come across. The most important is the customer. Whether it is a retail customer or a B2B customer, they would be your immediate secondary stakeholders because you are existing because they are existing. And of course, a very important stakeholder in any business decision, whether I am starting Uclean as a founder or somebody is taking the franchisee of my brand, my friends and families need to be aligned. So again, a very important stakeholder in the entire franchising business is the friends and family. And it is, it is very important to get their acceptance or to get their understanding when you're starting a new business. So whether I'm starting a business as a founder of a franchising company or whether I'm someone who's taking the franchisee of an existing brand, I need to ensure that my friends and family are aligned. Now, there are a lot of tertiary stakeholders that are going to be supporting your entire franchising ecosystem. So whether it is your suppliers or maybe investors, so you might have raised money in your company. So there are investors who will be influencing your decision to franchise. There is obviously the government. And in today's world, there is a new trend of influencers who are out there who are talking about brands who are talking about services and directly and indirectly influencing the decision of customers to avail your service or of micro entrepreneurs to consider whether they should take up a franchise or not. So as long as this entire ecosystem is sorted for you and very importantly, as a brand owner, as a franchisor, you should have a very good understanding of who these stakeholders are because whatever franchise program you're designing, whatever business model you're designing, it is very important that all these stakeholders are aligned. And literally every stakeholder is important because even if this one stakeholder fails, there is a very high probability that your business will not perform. So as a franchisor or as an owner of a business that is getting into franchising, it can be a little complicated. It can be a little overwhelming. And that is why I would always very strongly recommend that you need to have a stakeholder mapping. You need to understand who your stakeholders are and you need to think how they will react if you're introducing a new idea, a new concept, or if you're existing, or if you're making changes to business model. Now, like I said, when you talk about the franchising industry globally, it is very old. It is more than a century old and a lot of big brands that you keep hearing about, they have been franchising for the longest time. Your, uh, US is the mother of franchising. So the entire franchising industry, the ideas, the agreements, the laws, 
the the concept of franchising in itself it all started from the us and very soon europe picked it up so franchising in us and europe is very very old even if you talk about southeast asia so malaysia indonesia south korea japan you would realize that there also franchising has been existing for more than 5 to 6 decades but in india real franchising started only towards the 1990s in the early 1990s the first brand that technically started giving out franchisee was kodak uh, when they started rolling out kodak the photography lab franchisee so typical uh, photography centers which were kodak lab- labeled kodak branded and had all the equipment the cameras etc that were from kodak so that is how kodak franchising in india started towards late 90s once the economic liberalization had fully happened government had started allowing partial fdis in india that is when international brands also started looking positively at india and franchising industry in particular got very excited it all started with uh, the big boys of franchising industry which is mcdonalds and dominos they entered india first they started teaching india about franchising they started creating an awareness that you could also be an owner of dominos pizza at a neighborhood level this led to what i would call a flooding of franchising in india people started understanding franchising people started seeking franchisees and that created the next layer in franchising which is franchising brokers so very similar to what you would have in a real estate when you want to buy an apartment when you want to rent out an apartment or buy an office you typically go through the broker the broker would do all the heavy lifting for you and he would typically charge a commission once the agreement is signed up so similarly franchise brokers work on a very similar formula they would be working with multiple brands that are looking to give out franchises and then you will have a lot of these investors or micro entrepreneurs who want to start a business of their own and that is why they are looking at franchise so a broker would connect the brand with the franchisee and in the process once the deal happens the broker would also get a success fee so today i think a lot of you would have heard of franchise india which is today the biggest franchising and licensing company in the world they started from a small shop in delhi way back in 2000 but today they are the biggest company when you look at the franchising industry and this is globally so that also goes on to show how franchising in india is maturing for the next 15 uh, 10 to 15 years traditional franchising was very hot in india now uh, what do i mean when i say traditional franchising so traditional franchising includes restaurants salons fitness chains and preschools so between 2005 to 2018 19 the only franchises that were getting so like hotcakes in india get to these four segments so you had euro kids and kids z in preschool in restaurants you had mcdonalds dominos the uh, sagar uh, a lot of home grown brands started coming up salon you had natural salon you had uh, affinity you had look salon and gym chains a lot of them it, so much so that even virat mahendra singh dhoni started their own guys 2000 as soon as covid came in a lot of these businesses went out of fashion reason being that if you look at a restaurant a gym a salon or a preschool you would realize that all of them were operationally intensive they required very large areas 1000 square feet 1200 square feet 1500 square feet they required prime locations typically inside malls or high streets which meant that there there was huge operating expenses involved now as soon as covid struck because there was zero business all these businesses started closing and a lot of money went down the drain to start a gym franchise of a brand like anytime fitness or fitness first you had to spend 70 80 lakh rupees now suddenly with covid coming in all that money went down the drain and that is where novel concepts started picking up so honestly all the growth of you clean that i'm talking about it actually was triggered by covid because our format if you look at laundry it's a very micro format setup that we have you can typically start a you clean on an area as small as 200 square feet Uh, you don't have to be present in a mall or on a high street you can be present in the noble neighborhood market your investment is about 20 lakh rupees which meant that investors were willing to take that bet they were no longer prepared to spend 75 lakhs 80 lakh rupees to start a look salon or a 
franchise of a gym chain they wanted something that was relatively lower on investment and that could be started in areas where the operational expenses could be kept in control uh, covid also led to a lot of online franchise businesses so you had edtech brands like byju's an academy and a lot of other edtech brands that suddenly started franchising dark stores were again very fashionable because the advantage with dark stores is that you don't have to set it up in a mall or high street so you set up a store in some remote gali or mohalla where your rentals are on the lower side and that is why these businesses which were novel in nature but which meant that the initial investment and the ongoing operating expenses were on the lower side suddenly started becoming popular but now that the franchising in industry in india has almost seen a 25 years journey i strongly believe that we are at what i would call the bottom of the hockey stick curve from here onwards it's going to be an exponential growth and this will impact all industries so again restaurants will become fashionable salons will become fashionable but laundry would continue to be as attractive as it was a couple of years back you will have more edtech concepts you would have jewelry brands but a lot of people now want to in invest in franchising and one very interesting uh, reason for this is typically if you look at the indian mentality what do our parents tell us our parents say that take up a job because businesses are risky but in the last couple of years with what has happened with byju's an academy amazon google a lot of these startups have fired people in mass and a lot of this firing has happened in india so suddenly there is a very strong i would say undercurrent that is flowing where jobs are now as unsafe as starting your own business and a lot of people are starting to think that if my job is so unsafe i should rather take a risk by starting something of my own maybe take up a franchisee maybe start up, start up on my own at least there i would be working for myself so if i talk about purely what i've seen at you clean over the last one and a half year is a lot of my franchisees are people who have been laid off people that were laid off either by byju's an academy or google and suddenly they started realizing that jobs are no longer safe if i have to give my 100% why not do my own business and this is a very strong trend that i'm seeing across franchising industry but because you clean is something that i'm myself building i have seen at least 50% of my franchisees in the last one and a half years are people who either lost their jobs or they decided to quit their jobs because they never knew when the job might go away so this is a very strong trend that is going to drive this hockey stick growth for franchising now while we have talked a lot about franchising and how franchising has evolved in india and what we foresee going forward but it is also very important that why would a brand brand franchise and there are a lot of businesses that don't franchise whether you talk about online businesses or offline businesses there are a lot of brands that still do not franchise but the brands that do franchise there are some key factors that are into consideration one is it helps you capitalize the business so as you clean we are a bootstrap company but we have been pat positive for 5 years out of 6 years the only the covid year was when we were not able to generate uh, enough sales and we were a loss making company but beyond that as a company you clean has always been a pat positive company and that is because we franchise so every time you franchise out the franchisee pays you a one time franchisee fee or a license fee and then on an ongoing basis the franchisee also pays you royalty it it is generally a percentage of, of sales and the franchisee is mandated to pay royalty as long as they are using your brand name plus there is also a supply chain that is involved so there is a lot of revenue that keeps flowing in as soon as a franchisee comes on board and in that sense it is a very interesting way to raise capital for your business without diluting any equity the second alternative that i could have used for you clean was to raise funds and then use those funds to start stores of my own but that would also meant that i am diluting a lot of my equity so franchising is a beautiful model if executed right 
it can help you raise a lot of capital without diluting any equity without losing any control of your business second is and this is something that i am a big fan of like i said india is a country of micro entrepreneurs india is a country of shopkeepers every family in india regardless of their financial capacity regardless of the family size has the secret dream to have a business of their own to own a shop of their own and this is where the power of micro entrepreneurship comes in so as as uclean founder today when i have close to 450 franchise partners in india there are 450 co-founders that i have and all of these co-founders are working with one single mission to create a better brand equity something that i would have been doing alone along with the team members i today have 450 other franchise partners almost like my co-founders who are working very hard in their neighborhood to build a very strong brand recognition for you clean the power of micro entrepreneurship is amazing and any franchise business when it is done right it only flourishes because it is partnering with so many different micro entrepreneurs there is a reach that increases so as soon as so today for example uh, about 4 or 5 days back we launched two different stores one in an area called nadi engol we launched one store in uh, bangalore we launched one store in uh, uh, delhi and we launched one store in bihar all these four stores went live on the same day almost at the same time this is only possible if i'm franchising so my reach suddenly increases 4x because there are four different stores across india that have gone live on the same day this is very difficult to achieve as a company owned company operated company it also allows you to prioritize so again let me take a step back if as the founder of uclean or if i'm running a franchising company and i had to open all the stores myself it would consume a lot of my bandwidth as a founder it would also consume a lot of bandwidth the founding team because all your time and energy will be spent on launching these stores making sure they become profitable making sure they are be getting the requisite support but when i have these franchise partners these micro entrepreneurs opening these different outlets it allows me to decide what i need to focus on and this is something that you would not be able to do if you are doing everything on your own it also helps you brand so now that there are four stores that are go- going live on the same day or 10 stores that are going live on the same day there's a lot of branding that is happening across different locations where the franchisee is also participating the franchisee is also investing so as a company one it allows you to do very quick branding two it also reduces your cost of branding very significantly because each of these franchise partner is also investing in their own marketing and promotional efforts and obviously nothing speaks like success the moment you have 10 franchisees 15 franchisees who are happy with you they will start talking about your franchise to their friends their families they might even start taking more franchisees of your own so today again going to the uclean example today we have about 27% of our franchise partners who started with one single unit they like the business they like the profitability they like the support that we were extending and that's when they decided to start a second uclean so this is what happens the moment you have success story success spreads through word of mouth it spreads through social media it spreads through print media and suddenly you have a lot of partners queuing up wanting to start a franchise of their own so if you are able to it right and this is something that i'll keep repeating that franchising has to be done right in the right manner with the right amount of patience with the right amount of support if you are able to conjure all that together then the success story will spread like anything and your brand's growth will be exponential and this, this is the reason why a lot of brands they decide to franchise even if you look at brands unicorns and i'll take names byju's an academy these were all online only businesses until covid but suddenly after covid they realized that students no longer want to be taught online only they started going back to the coaching centers and that is where these mega brands like byju's an academy vedantu they started realizing that you have to have a brick and mortar presence and that is why they started franchising today an academy in fact is one of the fastest growing franchise companies in india who have opened their franchises across more than 50 cities of the country and this is the power of franchising
now we have talked about franchising and it is again important to understand that not every business is franchisable so when you are looking to franchise out your business or say from day one itself you are planning to build a business where you want to use franchising as the channel for growth it is very important to first evaluate whether your business is franchisable in the first place or not so one it is very important to understand what is the main idea in franchising first movers advantage can be very very strong so if for example a brand like uh, natural salon which started almost 20 years back today they have more than 700 salons in south india alone a lot of other salon brands were created after naturals on a very similar model but they have not been able to achieve the kind of scale or growth that naturals has achieved because these were ideas that were me tos so it is very important to understand that how good your idea is because ultimately you are going to compete with a lot of others in the market for every business idea that you come up with i can assure for you that there will be at least 100 other brands that are franchising a similar concept so you need to figure out whether your business idea or your main idea is solid enough to franchise it has to be replicable and a very relevant example to understand here is that the restaurant business so when you talk about qsr businesses like mcdonalds if you look at the mcdonalds model or the subway model very closely you will realize that technically it's not a restaurant it's an assembly line setup mcdonalds has everything so detailed defined in their standing operating procedures that you can never go wrong they tell you how to open the tap they tell you how to open the shutter of the shop they tell you how to fry the fries they tell you how to create a burger everything is defined to the last t and that is why it is so easily franchisable it is an idiot proof model but when you talk about celebrity chef and i'll give an example india's most famous celebrity chef sanjeev kapoor he started a restaurant chain by the name of name of yellow chillies it became very popular when he started selling it a lot of people wanted to partner with sanjeev kapoor wanted to start their own yellow chilli franchise but where is the brand today they have absolutely stopped franchising majority of their restaurants have shut down reason being that you cannot copy or you cannot clone a sanjeev kapoor people want to go to sanjeev kapoor because they want to taste the food that is cooked by sanjeev kapoor but obviously sanjeev kapoor is not someone who is omnipresent omnipotent that he can be present in all these different restaurants and that is why the experience will never be the same so some businesses are just not cut out for franchising processes are very important i already talked about how detailed the sop of mcdonalds is all big franchise brands you will find something very similar that you can literally run their franchise from that 300 pager or 400 pager operations manual that they provide you but one thing that is very very important to understand is personality are you as a founder do you have the kind of personality that can handle franchising because franchising is not easy every franchisee that takes a franchise of your brand is an individual and he is a different character from every other franchisee that you have come across you have to have the ability the patience the tolerance to put up with everyone if you are someone who is not prepared to listen if you are someone that cannot talk on the phone for 30 minutes or cannot attend a meeting which potentially is a pointless meeting then you might not be the right person for franchising so personality is a very important character especially as a founder you need to be very sure that you will be able to manage 500 different personalities 500 different characters who all demand your time and attention and one thing that is very important is you have given out a franchisee the franchisee has been trained by you he has run the business for 6 months 12 months now he understands the business so why should he stick to the brand and in india this happens a lot a lot of people it has happened with uclean also people who learned from us Uh, after 12 months or after 24 months they thought that we understand this business very well why should we work with the brand why should we pay them royalty and they decided to make a switch it's a different story what happened to them later on but the point is that you should have something very strong it it could be the ability to generate customers it could be an ip that you own it could be a technology that you own but there should be something that should drive the stickiness 
of your franchisees to your business else there's a very good probability that they might just jump ships or they might start up on their own so it is highly recommended that you evaluate whether you are someone who can franchise out whether your brand is some is someone that can franchise out and this is a very interesting uh, slide to consider because the moment people start reading about franchising on the internet there is this temptation that let me also start franchising this looks like a fantastic business let me also make some money let me delegate the responsibility to my franchisee and my brand will become very big i'll be present in 200 cities people will talk invite me for talk shows and what not but the idea is that there is so much there that you can dream and then there is so much that you can attain so as a as a franchise owner there are a lot of factors that you need to consider before you take the conscious call of whether you want to jump into franchising or not and evaluate yourself aspiration has to be very very strong you need to be someone who aspires to build a franchising brand but at the same time you also need to consider whether you can attain all the important requisites to become a franchisable business so always evaluate yourself on how what is the level of aspiration that you have and how attainable are those aspirations and as long as you are able to strike a balance only then you should be franchising so ask your day self these questions and only then jump into the waters now we have talked about franchisability so say as a founder of a business or a founder of someone who is starting a new business you have decided that your business is a franchisable business you consulted people you spoke to your friends and family and you took a conscious call that you have a business that can be franchised now before you start selling franchises in the market there are few things that need to be in place which is what i call building your franchise readiness one is the most obvious you need to have a franchise model a business model in place which basically explains what a franchisee is expected to do what a franchisor is expected to do there should be a financial model to support what you are selling so uh, an investor wanting to take up your franchisee should know what is his expected investment what is the return on investment how much manpower would be required what would be the operating expenses so all this needs to be in place is before you sit across the table with any investor for a franchise discussion you also need to take a call on what are your target markets so for example if you are building a business in bangalore like for example uh, one of the most famous brands in bangalore these days is rameshwaram cafe so rameshwaram cafe has very consciously decided that as of now they would focus on giving out franchises only in the karnataka region and which is a very logical decision because all their cafes right now in are in bangalore so it is very important that somebody who is taking up a franchisee they should be able to physically visit a location understand the nuances understand the challenges and should be able to spend some time at their cafe to see how the daily business works out so it is very important for some businesses target market might not be important if i'm building an online business an online franchise business it doesn't matter you i might be based out of delhi i can give out a franchise in pondicherry i can give out a franchise in srinagar so depending on what kind of business you are running it is important to identify what your target markets are now in today's world whether your business is tech intensive or does require tech or doesn't require tech you still need to have a tech in place because like they say jo dikhta hai wo bikta hai so today investors who are looking to take up a franchisee almost everybody is talking about technology so that is why it is very important to have at least a basic tech in place a tech that can manage your customer a tech that can manage your franchisee a tech that can manage your supplies all this could be integrated this could be something that you develop in house or this could even be outsourced but a basic tech needs to be in place the supply chain has to be there so for example if i am starting a salon brand and uh, i am using i have my own factory from where i am going to be supplying the facial cream as an example then if i am giving i am in bangalore if i am giving out a franchise in shrinagar do i have the logistics in place to actually send all these supplies from bangalore to shrinagar so supply chain is very very important a lot of franchise relationships 
SAR because the supply chain is not in place. So make sure that before you give out even your first sales pitch, your supply chain should be in place. You should be able to confidently answer any every single investor. Your agreements are the most important document. Now, unfortunately, franchising as an industry in India is still not recognized. What I mean by recognition is that there are no specific laws that are governing the franchise business. So say, for example, you are a franchisor, you are running a brand and for some reasons you have a fallout with your franchisee and the two of you decide to go to court for a resolution. The court does not have any franchising laws to refer to. So this dispute that you're having with your franchisee will be treated as a bi-party dispute where there are two different parties that are at loggerheads for some reasons. So that is why it is very important to make sure that your agreements are in place. There is always a desperation to sell a franchisee. Somebody says that I want to start your franchisee. I'm ready to invest money. And I've seen a lot many times the sales team totally forgets about getting the agreements executed. And this could be the biggest mistake that you will ever make in your brand journey. So it is extremely important to have a lawyer in place, have a franchising advisor in place and make sure that you have the agreements in place. Also have a management in place. Uh, you need to figure out how you're going to manage your franchising. For example, today, majority of the brands, including us, we use WhatsApp. So every single franchisee has a dedicated WhatsApp group where the franchisee team is added, our team is added and all escalations, all discussions happen on these individual groups. In fact, I am today added on more than 500 WhatsApp groups related to Uclean, out of which 450 plus are just our franchise WhatsApp group. So I'm literally added on every single WhatsApp group that we have with our franchise partner. And it helps me have a visibility into what is happening on the ground. And wherever my intervention is required, I am ready to step in. Most importantly, figure out what your non-negotiables are. Because see, Again, every individual franchisee is a character. Every individual franchisee might want to take certain liberties. So as a brand, you need to figure out what are your non-negotiables from which you cannot backtrack. If a franchisee is not willing to accept any non-negotiable, it is your duty not to go ahead with that franchise partner. There could be some areas where you want customization, where you would want to let the franchisee take a call, which is absolutely all right, but as a brand, you need to sit together with your core team, figure out what you would not want to change. Something as simple as branding. The branding has to be consistent. Only then you can create a consistent experience across all your franchisees. So figure out what all do you want, which should be non-negotiable, which should be partially negotiable and which should be negotiable. And on the non-negotiables, you should not be prepared to backtrack. So all these documents is literally your Gita or Bible of your franchise business. And before you come up with even the first franchisee, you have to have make sure that all these documents, all these uh, 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 agreements they are in place and they are very religiously and strictly implemented from day one. Last of all, while, like I said, franchising can be very tempting because you are getting paid. Somebody is working very hard to build your brand. Somebody is working very hard to promote your brand, to create a brand awareness. And ultimately, they're all contributing to building your brand. But whether it is fair or not, the point is that the franchisees don't have any equity in your business. So ultimately, if the brand is being built, if a name is being created, if a reputation is being created, it is all helping your brand where you 100% own it. But it is very tempting, but it is also very important to understand that there are few things that you should never do in franchising. And I call them the cardinal sins of franchising. One, do not get into franchising if you're seeking work-life balance. A lot of people think that if I start franchising, I have so many different franchisees doing the heavy lifting on the ground, my workload will reduce. It's not going to happen. In fact, like I said, every franchisee, every micro entrepreneur is a character. Every franchisee will demand your time, demand your attention. They will want to meet you in person and they can keep coming to meet you in person. So 
the only thing that i can say is that if your work life balance is screwed at this point in time and you decide to franchise it will become even more screwed than ever so this is something that you need to accept before you jump into the waters of franchising second if your egoistical franchising is absolutely not the business for you my franchisees message me at 12 in the night at 2 in the morning at 3 in the morning i have also attended calls at 1 or 2 in the morning from one frustrated franchisee or the other who is ranting about something that he doesn't like or some team member of mine that had a difference with him and i have been there i have been available and i have been abused i'll be honest so the the retort to an abuse cannot be an abuse so you have to if you are someone who is egoistical you have to be prepared to suck up your ego and be prepared to listen to your franchise partners listen to your team members and be prepared to pass a verdict if you are looking at instant gratification you couldn't be more wrong a lot of people think that today i will enter the market and tomorrow i'll get a franchise it doesn't work this way the biggest of brand and the best of brands have had a very long runway very long incubation period where before they were able to franchise out so if you are serious about franchising be prepared for at least a 3 to 6 months window where you have to consistently and relentlessly put efforts invest money chase your franchisees chase your investors before you will potentially convert your first investor into a franchisee so it it does require tremendous amount of patience and tolerance and there is no instant gratification do not franchise if franchising is not your number one priority i have seen so many brands where the founders did not want to franchise the team wanted to franchise and it never became the number one priority they ended up spending a lot of money a lot of time and eventually achieve nothing out of franchising franchising has to be your absolute number one priority if you want to get into franchising if you are someone who doesn't like listening then franchising is not for you because you will have to listen you will have to listen to your team your franchise partners your suppliers and a lot of that listening will not be music to the ears but you have to listen and if you are someone who doesn't like listening who only likes pondering then franchising is definitely not for you you have to be available you have to be available to your franchisee at midnight you have to be available for the launches you have to be available to connect with them to meet with them if you are someone who is poor at managing time then again franchising is not the right business for you please don't do franchising for hit and trial i don't want to name the franchise but we recently had a very big influencer one of the biggest influencers in india who who had a few stores of his own and then decided to franchise and then we had these firs registered against him at multiple locations because what he had committed was never delivered and in fact what i came to know was that this influencer when he had given out franchising franchisees of his uh, t brand he had also not signed agreements which was the most stupid thing that somebody could have done so do not do franchising for hit and trial if you are doing franchising make sure that you have the franchise playbook in place you have the documents in place and only then you get into franchising and don't do it for quick money there are a lot of uh, fly by night operators who create franchise businesses they make money and then they completely vanish and a lot of them have done it my only request is that you are creating a very bad name for the franchising industry you are creating a bad name for yourself but what you are also doing is that you are maligning the efforts of brands that are seriously into franchising that seriously want to build the culture of micro entrepreneurship in india and last uh, it's very fashionable today to talk about uh, franchising or talk about how your business is growing through franchising on social media uh, on linkedin on instagram on facebook i think it is good it helps because the moment you talk about uh, franchising you also start generating a lot of interest from others but please make sure that your stories are genuine and don't do it just because you want to post it it is important that you first handle your franchisee ensure that he understands the business is becoming profitable before you actually start posting about it on social media so these are some very while i have talked a lot about the do's these are some very important don'ts that you need to consider if you are seriously thinking about getting into a franchise business and last franchising if done right is an amazing business very simple comparison 
today if you decided or today if you wanted to start a business you have two options one is you could start up with an idea of your own provided you have one second is you could take up the franchise of an existing business globally 90% more than 90% of the startups do not survive 12 months you have seen those examples in india you have seen these examples internationally also nine, more than 90% of the startups fail within the first year but when you compare it with the numbers of franchising less than 25% franchisee shut down within one year so the numbers speak for themselves franchising is an amazing business franchising enables you to leverage the power of micro entrepreneurship especially for a country like india but it should be done with the right intent and it should be done in the right manner so thank you guys loved presenting my thoughts on franchising happy to take up any questions so much aruna for the there's a lot of myths revolving around thing a few questions so i think we will uh, head towards the question and answer section and we have the first question from jayant kohli who says how does franchising differ from other business expansion models so i think uh, the biggest difference uh, between franchising and any other uh, business model is that there is an involvement or rather a very close involvement of an external stakeholder in this case it is the franchisee so if you have found the right external stakeholder if you have handled him well if you have been able to extend the support that has been promised then there is no better expansion model than franchising provided your business is franchisable but if you fail on any of these counts maybe your franchise partner is not right maybe you don't have the systems and processes in place then it is the worst possible model to get into i hope that answers your question jay and taking up the next question uh, arunam we have uh, shake arif who asks what type of businesses are most suitable for franchising i think we've already touched upon uh, some of the businesses but if there's anything that you would like to add to his answer so i would say businesses where human intervention is not very high so like i said that if you are a celebrity chef then it is impossible for you to <coughs> replicate the same quality everywhere but if you are a qsr business like a mcdonalds which works like a factory model then it's very good for franchise all right and then we have a uh, prajwal kulal who asks uh, mr arna how does franchising impact brand consistency and control because this has always been the biggest concern with franchise businesses and i would say this absolutely happens this happens with the best of the brands because like i said every franchisee is an individual character and each character is different from the other you might end up having some bad apples along with the good ones and these ap bad apples could impact the performance of your brand could impact the perception of your brand so this this i have learned from bing and dominos actually operate their franchisee which is the moment they spot that there is a bad apple they one do whatever best they can to rectify it and two if they realize very quickly that rectification is not possible then they actually terminate the bad apple to exit out of system and this is something that as a franchise will have to very religiously very strictly follow that's great and i hope that answers the question uh, for you so moving on uh, arun we have shubham again i think we have already touched upon some of the answers here but what are the common challenges faced by businesses when friend so the don'ts and the do's i think they covered most of the examples but if there's anything that you would like to add so i think uh, if i have to pick up two very important factors one i would uh, pick up from the franchisee side and the second from the franchisor side 
uh, as a brand if you're not able to find the right partner then the business is going to become very difficult and especially when you are uh, starting up when your brand is new it is sometimes very difficult to say no to money on the table so you have someone your gut says that this person is not the right partner but because that person is sitting with a checkbook on the table you have the temptation to say yes and i have been a victim of this i have been guilty of this and i have learned it the hard way that there are some non negotiables that you need to follow and if your gut tells you that this person is the, not the right person for your franchise business then you need to say no to him and this is something that a brand should religiously follow and from the brand side again i would say that a franchising business especially in their early days they are very founder led business so if the founder is not someone who is good at people management is not someone who can suppress his ego then he, the he and the brand should not be getting into franchising in the first place that's that's amazingly uh, elaborated arun now i must say that and then we have melvin who asked uh, what are the risks involved in franchising your business again i think we have had an elaborate uh, discussion on it but if there's anything that you would like to add to it Uh, nothing new to add, but just that you don't have the right franchise partner. And if discovered that someone is not the right franchise partner, then you should initiate the process to get him out of the system. Then we have uh, Arun who ask, how is your brand different from the other laundry services brands in the market? So, in fact. Uh, There is a jazz around in the industry. It's uh, while PayPal has its own mafia, Flipkart has, has its own mafia. A uh, Uclean has also created a laundry mafia. So if you look at uh, the number of uh, brands that are franchising in the laundry industry today, more than fifty percent of them have actually been created by team members that were initially working with Uclean. So in that sense, Uclean is the mother of franchising in the laundry industry and uh, when you say how is it different so i would say the only difference is that uh, we are the first movers in this industry a lot of other franchise brands that have been created they are actually just a cut copy paste of what you clean is and a lot of them have died some of them are still fighting some of them are surviving but uh, we are uh, by far the leader as far as this industry is concerned then we have a uh, shama who asks uh which are the industries that would work efficiently in the franchising model and i think we touched upon the same answer in our uh, previous question as well which businesses yeah. would be more suitable so i hope that answers your uh, question shama and then we have um is franchising better than wholesale trading of the company products or dealership so very different businesses i would say it's an apples to oranges comparison uh distributorship uh, generally if you look at uh, franchise businesses and if you talk about service franchising uh, these are very high margin businesses like for example laundry is typically a 25% margin business restaurant is a 20% margin business salon is a 20% margin business but when you look at product distributorship and when you talk about say something like fmcg these are typically 0.5% to 1% to 1 and a half percent of a margin business so if to say i'm living in an ideal world where both businesses are doing very well then obviously franchising would do far better than distributorship but obviously we don't live in an ideal world so there could be areas where franchising doesn't work at all work out at all and your distributorship business does much better i know that answers your uh, question anonymous and then we have uh, arvad dinesh reddy who says how to get success in restaurant franchising explain with your experience i think both of them they are completely different uh, industries all together so how how do we do that so i think uh, i will not talk about my experience but uh, i do have a fair bit of understanding about uh, restaurant franchising and i because restaurant franchising in india today especially tough to be very honest the reason for that is you are dependent on zomato and swiggy uh, which end up charging you anywhere between 25% to 30% of your 
total sales, which means that restaurant industry, which traditionally used to have about twenty percent margin, today the margin has shrunk to five to six percent. So, for you to be successful as a restaurant operator, one, I will never say that you cannot depend on Zomato and Swiggy. That is not going to happen. So, you have to accept that uh, these are the devils that are going to be part of your business that will help you build your business. But the only way that you can increase your margin is by reducing pilferage. So, in food industry, in restaurant industry, wastage is a big problem. If you can use technology, if you can use your understanding to reduce the pilferage, reduce the wastage as much as possible, that will give you some more breathing room towards profitability. And then we have a couple of last questions. Uh, one is: Do we get any benefit from the government regarding franchisee business? So, like I said, that uh, franchising business today is. Uh, in india especially it's a business that has uh, very that really doesn't have any legal existence right like i said that uh, franchising as an industry is still working on gaining a recognition but uh, if i just use uclean as, as an example a lot of our franchise partners uh, have actually raised uh, funding from banks so there are a lot of uh, banks today that are more i would say open to the idea of franchising and are willing to extend loans so uh, there are a lot of franchises that have taken advantage of mudra loans there is pradhan mantri uh, 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 i'm forgetting the name pradhan mantri yojana which also gives out loans up to 10 to 15 lakhs to small businesses so franchise businesses because they fall in the category of msme a lot of them are able to take advantage of these government loans and then we have the last question um, by Javed. He says, what is a franchisee's liability and obligation if the business or the franchisee is sued? So uh, this has to be looked at uh, from a slightly larger lens because uh, when you talk about uh, franchise business and when you talk about offline retail based franchise business like you clean, you have every single franchisee is a legal entity in themselves so they they when when they are servicing a customer it is their legal entity that is serving the customer it is their legal entity that is uh, uh, giving the service to the customer but if the customer sues and a very simple example could be a consumer forum case when a case is filed in the consumer forum the liability is always joint because as a brand you have taken the franchisee of the brand and the customer is trusting the brand and not just the franchisee. So even in the case of Uclean, when we get a consumer forum case, the, the actual notice actually comes to the brand and not to the franchisee. Although the responsibility for resolving the, the problem or resolving the issue is the joint responsibility of both the franchisor as, and the franchisee because they are bound by a legal agreement. That's great, Arna. And uh, oh, we have another question that's been slid to us, which is the last question, and that is: Do you think that in future AI could destroy franchisee industry? Uh, why would AI dis uh, destroy the franchising industry? In fact, I would not be surprised if two years down the line we actually come up with AI-based franchise businesses. So there could be businesses that are built on AI. And then they start offering franchises, and that is definitely going to happen. But I, in no way, AI is going to destroy the franchise business. I can only see AI assisting franchise businesses, and in fact, a separate segment of AI-based businesses offering franchises should emerge in two to three years down the line. Well, that's uh, really very deep insights, and I think a very engaging question and answer session that we had. And with that, we will be drawing curtains to today's IRE Talk session. First of all, I would really thank all our participants and attendees for their active engagement, their questions, their involvement into this session. And I hope they have learned and they have taken away a few pointers from today's presentation from you, Varuna. Thank you so much for taking out time from your schedule and making it here on IRE Talk powered by GIBS today. And it was a pleasure hearing you. It was very informative, in fact. And 
Thank you. Thank you for being an integral part of this conversation. Thank you so much, uh, everyone. And uh, I am a big, big believer in franchising. I'm a big believer in micro entrepreneurship. And uh, if any one of you wants to build a business in franchising or are looking to take up a franchise or any other brand, or you generally want to talk franchising, I would love to connect with you. I am uh, most approachable on LinkedIn. So feel free to send out a request. Feel free to bombard me with questions. And uh, especially if you're looking at starting a franchise brand, I can explore partnership, I can explore investment. Or if you want to take up a Ukraine franchisee, again, LinkedIn is the best way to get to me. Definitely. I'm sure after this session, uh, your inbox is going to be bombarded with a lot of queries, with a lot of questions, and with a lot of uh, connection requests. For those who are eagerly awaiting their certificates from today's webinar, I uh, would like to inform that the certificates would be processed in another 24-48 working hours. And please do join us for the next IRD talk, which is scheduled on 17th of Jan. And I look forward to seeing you all in the same session. Stay tuned on our YouTube, Facebook, social medias, WhatsApp communities, LinkedIn handles for all the updates and latest news from IRD Talks powered by GIBS Business School.